Hey guys, welcome to Next Level Carpentry. As many of you know, I'm in the process of moving into a new shop and getting it set up, and it's not really set up yet where I can work or shoot video in there, but I wanted to fill the gap in the upload schedule with a short video to show you a really cool trick that I learned recently. So you can see how reverse riveting works. And I'm not saying master carpenter this time because this isn't really a master carpentry trick, but it is pretty cool and pretty handy to have. I'm working on this house. Uh, some of you might recognize it from other Next Level Carpentry videos. And I had to install a sheet metal cap to cover some aged cracking window sills. It's not a perfect solution. It's kind of a band-aid to extend the life of these. But there's a sheet metal crew here doing standing seam roofing on the project. And I asked them to use their brake to make some metal caps for these aging window sills. I'll take the camera over there and show you in a minute. Um, when it came time to fit and install these caps over the window sills, I asked the sheet metal guys if they had some color matched screws for attaching the metal to the wood. Well, lucky for me, Sam Webb, the owner of Division 7 Sheet Metal, was on hand. Well, he's been around sheet metal work for many years, and he's got a huge bag full of tricks. He said, well, I got screws, but I've got something better. So if we go around to the side of the house here, I got to dangle out over a deck railing and I can't even see the viewfinder on the camera, but the house is made with direct glazed windows and uh, the window sills are built right in as part of the timber framing. You can see in this view kind of the shape of the window sill and how they're installed. And in my opinion, they don't have enough slope on them and they haven't been protected from the weather good enough over the years. Um, the other window sills don't have that extra piece of one by two stop on there like this one does. So the brake metal was a clean fit over the window sill. And uh, this isn't one of the window sills that I fixed. This one's actually in much better shape than the other ones. But the other ones are out on that steep, slopey roof uh, where a fall means a tumble all the way down the cliff. Might even end up in the creek. So I didn't want to shoot video over there. Someday maybe I'll have a Steven Spielberg on the team and we can get a big boom camera to pivot down over the roof, over the canyon, and get a straight shot in at the window as I'm actually working on it. Uh, but for now, I'll take you back to the unfinished shop and just do a mock-up of the window sill and the way this metal was attached so you can see how reverse riveting works. Pretty cool. Here we are back at the new shop on the old bench to cover the supplies you need for reverse riveting. The first thing you need obviously and naturally is rivets. I'm using eighth inch pop rivets. These are aluminum for an exterior application. A stainless steel rivet is probably a good idea even though it gets thoroughly sealed up with silicone in the process. Interestingly enough we do not need a pop rivet gun. Next thing that's needed is a pair of pliers, vice grips, pliers like this, needle nose, anything will do the job. You'll need a hammer for the reverse riveting process. Of course, you're going to need a driblet, and the size of the driblet needs to match the size of the pop rivet, which in this case is 1 8 of an inch. And because this is an exterior application, I'm going to use a dab of silicone to seal the hole. It's good to have a really small hole in the tip. This is actually a little bit big because it's left over from another job. And depending on the application, either a matching color silicone caulk for sealing the heads or a dab of touch-up paint from the metal that you're attaching. With all the supplies gathered, I took a piece of 2x4, ripped a 15 degree bevel on it to use as a mock-up for those old cracked and knotty sills at the house and the bevel on the metal matches the bevel on the sill for a nice snug fit. Once I marked, measured, and prepared the flashing, it's time to fasten it. This is a pair of custom-made vice grips that I use for this sort of work to get nice, tight, wide bends on sheet metal. When it comes time to fasten the metal to the wood, the typical way to do it would be to use rubber washer-headed self-drilling screws to hold the metal down. These screws are for a metal building where the tin is fastened to metal purlins. The screws for fastening metal to wood are smaller, but it's the same idea. And the end result is a pretty good sized head on the surface of the metal. So I like the option of reverse riveting for this application a whole lot better. The process of reverse riveting is remarkably simple for how slick and effective it is. Just grab my driblet and drill a hole through the metal into the wood at the same depth of the rivet itself. In this case, that's about a half an inch. Nothing to it. 
And here's the nugget of this whole trick for reverse riveting. We're not going to put the rivet in this way and use the pop rivet gun, but rather grip the rivet with a pair of pliers, vice grips, needle nose, whatever you have, and just tap the mandrel out of the rivet and flip it around and put it in the other direction. That's a reverse rivet. Before I drive the rivet, I'll put a dab of silicone in the hole. Like I said, this hole is a little large. If I was doing a lot of these rivets, I'd get a new tube and cut a teeny hole on there for more accurate placement. But regardless, with silicone in the hole, I take the reverse rivet, slip it down in here, and then drive the pin. And that right there, folks, is a reverse rivet. Holds the metal wonderfully. Nice, clean little head compared to a self-drilling washer head screw with a silicone caulk. That's as sealed up as it needs to be. And for an extra measure, you can either touch this up with matching touch-up paint or put a dab of colored silicone caulk to get a nice, smooth sealant bead on the tip of that rivet. We'll do another one here just for good measure. Drill an eighth inch hole the depth of the rivet. Tap the mandrel out of the rivet. And flip the pin around. Add a dab of silicone caulk. This wouldn't be necessary for an interior application. Got a little carried away with the caulk there. Once the rivet is seated down against the metal, Just drive the pin home for a nice, clean, finished rivet job. A little bit of denatured alcohol to clean up any excess caulk from the surface. Drill, seal, reverse, and drive. You can't beat that for simplicity. Gotta love it when something so good, so slick, is so easy. Well, that's about all there is to reverse riveting. I want to thank Sam Webb from Division 7 Sheet Metal for sharing that little nugget from his bag of tricks. It worked out great for this installation, and I hope viewers will find it helpful for stuff they're working on too. It's obviously not a universal solution. Sometimes only a washer head screw driven in is going to be strong enough to withstand wind or rain or uh, snow loads or whatever. But uh, any time that uh, just a little tack is needed to hold a piece of sheet metal in place, get a nice clean look, I think this is the way to do it. If you find this little tip helpful, I hope you'll consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. It's free and there's a whole bunch of other videos here with other similar useful tricks that you might find helpful for the projects you're faced with. There's a lot of times when I'm working, I get to reflecting on mentors and different people have in influenced my life and my work, and uh, just think about how I really appreciate them. Uh, and there's one guy, the guy's name was Howard Ritzman. Uh, he lived next door to a rental property my wife and I owned, and he was like um, uh, Howard in tool time. He'd come over and talk over the fence and uh, give me grief when I was working. He, Howard was kind of like a... He was kind of a cactus. He was prickly on the outside, but just all soft and mushy on the inside. Just a great guy. But he'd come over and give me grief about one thing or another. So I'm over there digging uh, some bushes or whatever, and I give him some grief back. Hey, Howard, come on over here and help me dig these holes. And he goes, well, I'd, I, I can't help you out. I'd love to help you out, but there's, there's something wrong with my hands. And just look at this. They just, they just don't work right. They're, they're hooked up funny, and, they, and they, they don't work with a shovel. So I'm sorry, I can't help you out. And I just, <laughs> for whatever reason, that was probably, I don't know, 25 years ago. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And Howard was a great guy. Uh, he's passed away now some years, uh, but the memory lives on. Um, I've got a toolbox with a slide out tool tray. And um, there's parts of that toolbox that are made with uh, curly silver maple. And the curly silver maple tree came from Howard's front yard. He was that kind of guy had the tree cut down because it was lifting up his sidewalk and uh, I asked him for the wood. He said, oh, sure, take the wood. So anyways, I have two memories 
the hands that are disconnected and the beautiful curly maple that's part of that toolbox from Howard. It's a fond memory, but maybe you had to be there. <laughs>